how my destiny to be a bridge between these two cultures. And the Qigong is exactly the bridge to connect those two cultures, merge them together. Theoretically, there's no illness um, that is uh, not, we cannot heal in Qigong theory. The people has to uh, be motivated by themselves. They want to learn, yeah. They want to change, yeah. And then they will listen to the teacher and they do uh, what the teacher tells. So, hello again, my name is Ping. I'm originally from China and now living in Germany. So now I'm working 100% as a Jinan Qigong teacher and educator. I've been practicing Jinan Qigong for 22 years. I learned Jinan Qigong uh, in China in 1999 at my hometown, Qingdao. So it is um, in north, uh, north. Eastern China, a uh, very beautiful place. And uh, there, uh, there's a very good Jinan Qigong school. I went there uh, during the break of my, uh, during the time also, after I finished my study in Switzerland. And then my mother told me, ah, there's Jinan Qigong, you must practice and learn with me together. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, because of my mom, yeah. And uh, I'm very thankful for, for her because she introduced Junan Qigong to me. And uh, actually, I was very interested for Qigong already before, yeah. And uh, I heard it that I was very uh, curious and then went with, with her together to this school. So after one week, I made a decision. I signed up for the education for the one year. Uh, instead of half a year, I stayed in China for one year to finish the Jinan Qigong education at this school. It's a, a full-time school. So it's a eight hours practice every day, daily for one year. So, and then after that, I went back to Switzerland, working there. It was 1999. And then in 2008, I moved to Germany because my husband is German, yeah. And then till now I live in Germany. And um, so I'm very happy, very lucky to be a Chunan Qigong teacher. <laughs> and then also at the same time, um, I was also translating Dr. Pang's book, Chunan Qigong book, uh, translate some books from Chinese to German, German language. <laughs> How do you like living in Germany in comparison to, to your hometown? Because I grew up in China, you know, uh, also in my blood, in my bone. I'm a Chinese, also I was growing up with the Chinese tradition. And then uh, through the education, through this uh, experience to, to live in Europe, I got also a very deeply understanding of the European culture. So I think uh, it's um, somehow my destiny to be a bridge between these two cultures. And the Qigong is exactly the bridge to connect those two cultures, merge them together. The students that you teach uh, do they come to you with um, common issues? Um, are there certain problems that, that people come to you with wanting to heal? Or um, are they just curious about Chining Qigong? What kind of um, relationship do you have with your clients in that way? All kinds of, yeah. There are people that are interested for Qigong. Yeah. There are also people that have some problem in body or in psychological level, um, want to get healthy or, or more balance. Or there are also some people they are looking for something, still they are seeking for something, for a way of life, uh, all kind of uh, different 
different people. Do you maybe have some healing stories where uh, that you'd like to share? Um, maybe helping um, someone overcome as you know an illness or uh, something like anxiety or depression. Yes, there are many many healing stories. Yeah, and uh, to share the healing story is very nice. Yeah, because you are sharing the good information. To the other, uh, my teacher at that time when I learned Junan Qigong, yeah, he himself was a um, um, patient of cancer, uh, very badly, seriously. And when he went to the center of the uh, Huaxia Junan Qigong Center and uh, practice Qigong and get 100% healed. And he lives still now very healthy in my hometown. So um, he was also later, he was uh, teaching the two years education course in center. And then later, uh, because of family reason, he went back to my hometown Qingdao and opened this Junan Qigong school in a way very similar like the center. So, he was my first teacher <laughs> and himself was a patient, success, successfully get healed, yeah. And also um, of my students, they are also um, successful uh, examples of uh, healing, yeah. So uh, one uh, who is now Junan Qigong teacher, yeah was a um, um, cancer patient with uh, breast cancer, yeah. And is 100% healed, yeah. And an another one just finished the teacher's education. She was, she, she was also um, a cancer, yeah, cancer patient. Also a breast cancer, yeah. And, uh, so she is, I think not yet 100%, but almost 100% getting better, yeah. And also uh, different, uh, different kind of um, uh, psychological disturbing, yeah, depressions. Also there are uh, students who is getting better, getting 100% healed in this era. In many, many successful examples by healing. But uh, theoretically, there's no illness um, that is uh, not, we cannot heal in Qigong theory. But in reality, um, many, many factors can influence the effect. The so one side, we need a really hard practice. And the other side, we need the trust and motivation. And maybe we need change the lifestyle and then create a good environment, family environment, <laughs> uh, front, front circle environment. So in reality, the healing is uh, um, multi uh, perspective thing. So that's why we cannot really guarantee uh, if you practice Qigong, you really can get healed because uh, sometimes we, it's kind of tough to change the destiny and to change the destiny, we need a strong inner will and also we need a strong power. That's why groups and teachers are also very important as supporting. What advice do you have for beginners, for someone wanting to start to learn Chineng Qigong? Yeah, so for a beginner, uh, maybe we should do some easy, small exercise, yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, we should learn the technique to build up the Qi field, to understand what is a Qi, what's the meaning of the Qi field. And then to do some small exercise like la qi, open close. 
And then um, we should do some exercise like uh, lift it up or it down. Yeah. Uh, so if um, the complete version is too long, we can also teach some short version like just just open and close and just repeating the lift it up or it down like this. Yeah. And uh, to do some movement with the shoulder, yeah. The so push pull is also very nice, yeah. But uh, take the time, yeah. Maybe for some it's easy, but for some could also be a little heavy because of shoulder, neck blockage, yeah. And then uh, some small exercise like uh, uh, like rotate the the hip, the hips, yeah. The waist is also very nice. Wall squat, it's very nice, yeah. And uh, for the beginner, we should uh, uh, pay attention that uh, not teach too much. <laughs> Take it easy, yeah, easy step by step. Um, but uh, it's different. It's kind of different way to learn. If you like to. To do the education, of course, you need to study the completely uh, level one or level two or the exercise. Yeah. And if you just to try, like to try it out, and maybe you just do some small exercise, get the chi feeling, uh, get the movement feeling, yeah, what is the chi movement step by step. Mm -hmm.